Hi all, I want to start going over how to prepare for the AP Physics 1 exam this year, the 2020 exam, given the different format. So as I talked about in general in the last video is that the most of the, the AP exams that I cover or I tutor um, are going to be two free response questions. The first for AP Physics 1, the first one is a 25 minute question. It's called a Q, uh, QQT question or qualitative quantitative translation question. It's worth 12 points and has multiple parts. And so I want to give you an idea of what that means. Because in the description, you have to you have to go into the exam guide for the AP Physics 1 to read what these questions mean. So these are the four types of questions that you would normally see in an AP Physics exam. And because of the condensed two question format, one of the questions you're going to get is the qualitative quantitative translation, which is the QQT 12.3 to 5 question parts. This question type assesses the student ability to translate between quantitative and qualitative justification and reasoning. So the good news is, is this question has existed on the current format of the AP Physics 1 exam. And um, I'm going to go through which questions those are and what to look for. And we can use those as a practice um, when you're studying. So that's the first question is the QQT question. The second question they say is the paragraph argument short answer question. And this is one where they'll ask you to write a short essay. So it's worth seven points. It's normally timed about 13 minutes or you know estimated 13 minutes, but they're gonna give you 15 minutes for this question. And basically there's a, always a question on the uh, current AP Physics 1 format that also has one of these on there. So from 2015, 2016, 17, 18, and 19, there's one paragraph argument short answer question that we can use as a reference for practice. So, so the good thing is, is both of these questions exist in the current AP exam format. Now the bad news. When I did research on the last five exams, okay, um, the QQT version of the question, the QQT question from each of the exams is on a topic that is relevant. Okay, that because remember, they've, they've, they've cut out certain material from the AP exam. However, the paragraph argument short answer question, I could only find two relevant questions that would cover the same material that is tested on this exam. The other three years of exams were on like circuits or electricity or mechanical waves. And those sections have been removed from the AP uh, Physics 1 2020 examination. So we have less practice questions to work on for the par paragraph argument short answer question. Okay, so that might be useful. Maybe you didn't know what these were called before. I actually didn't know what the specific questions were called because I, I try to teach you guys just like how to approach problems, how to break them down. But technically there are specific questions and specific kinds of questions that they ask. And I wanted you to, you all to know which questions were the QQT and what to expect from them. Okay. And I'll have in the description below what year and what question it is as a summary. Um, which ones are the QQT questions and which ones are the paragraph argument questions, okay? So let's talk about general preparation for the AP Physics 1 exam. So how are we gonna study? How are we gonna prepare, okay? In general, I would say prepare the same way we've been doing. I want lots of practice questions and, and practice problems. However, you're gonna do, there's gonna be less calculator work. So of the kinds of questions that are like compute this and doing square roots on the calculator, they said on the AP exam, none of them are going to require calculator, although you can use a calculator, it should be fine. So that's the first thing is uh, the calculator work is going to be somewhat secondary to what you need to know for the, for, for the examination. The other part I would say, so, so continue to practice, practice free response questions. That's, that's what you want to do. Uh, even if they are not of these two formats, um, continue to practice free response questions. I think I think that's still a good good thing to do. The other big thing I would say, and I, I can't emphasize this enough, is that for your AP exam, you want to create your own note sheet, maybe front and back, but ideally one page of sheets that condenses the most important things that you you need to uh, understand for the. Um, for the material, right? And it's going to be some of the big things. It can be equations, all right? Any equations you want. I like writing down the equations in the own way I like to write them. I don't like the AP Physics formula sheet. I prefer the way that um, I have it, but that's that's a personal preference, okay? 
But it other it also may have like important things you may want to include, like um, when when to apply conservation of momentum, okay? When to apply conservation of energy, um, and how do I know energy is conserved versus not conserved? Or maybe some definitional things like what is an elastic collision? Hint: It is not that it bounces. Elastic collision means energy is conserved. Mechanical energy is conserved. To be more precise, so um, you know what 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 does it mean when energy might not be conserved and where energy goes not in the conservation uh, when it's not conserved things like that that you want to really like dig into uh, and put on there because these two QQT and the paragraph argument short answer questions they are more qualitative they're gonna say like explain or justify why or things like that so that's that's kind of what you need to be thinking you need thinking about more conceptual make sure you understand not just the the formulas and the computations right that's important but how to apply them and why to apply certain things because they're going to ask you to justify the, those things so create your own sheet create one for kinematics a section for kinematics formulas any important facts that you need to understand um, a thing about uh, Newton's laws the Newton's three laws how they apply what they mean uh, write it in your own voice, in your own, and, and try as short as possible. Like I said, try to keep it to one page, because you don't have a lot of time to be digging through notebooks. You don't have a lot of time to be um, jumping through things. So you want a, a nice condensed thing that you can just reference very, very quickly uh, in this short amount of time. Okay. So that's what I think prep looks like. Now, once you've done prep on practice questions, then I want you to time yourself, okay? You're gonna give yourself a stopwatch and time yourself 25 minutes for all the example QQT questions. Time yourself 15 minutes for every paragraph, argument, short answer question. Reserve those questions as like, we are going to practice that in a timed scenario and to see if I can, I can do that. And again, have it with your sheet of paper. Have it with your your created note sheet too. So I would say about two weeks before your examination date, um, with your you know sheet in hand, test yourself. See if you can do the QQT exam from the previous exams, and if you're able to do them okay. So let's take a look at some of the questions. I kind of document them here. So from the 2015 exam. This is the first QQT question. This is the first AP Physics 1 examination. It was question number three. You can see it was 12 points, suggested time 25 minutes. That's the same format. And the kinds of things you're looking for, how do I know this is the QQT question, is because um, um, the 25 minute questions, there's only two kinds of questions. One is an experimental design, and the other is a QQT. So of the so so on a, every AP Physics 1 exam, there's two 25 minute questions. One's the QQT, one's experimental design. You do not need to practice the experimental design. They are not that the, the, that free response question is not going to be on the exam this year. It's the QQT one. So it's going to be some kind of it's multi multiple parts. Um, it might be all symbols and no numbers, right? And I, I fully expect that, given that you're not going to be needing to use a calculator, I fully expect it to be a lot of expressions. And then you're going to be interpreting what a student thinks, why he's saying it, who's correct, you know, those kinds of conceptual things that require sentences. Um, and then some quantitative reasoning. So it's a mix of a little bit of computation, uh, manipulating some formulas with symbols, as well as some um, short sentence response kinds of um, things and that's going to make it harder for harder for you to cheat or copy answers because uh, those sentence answers like it's unlikely you would copy the exact same sentences uh, between students or even like if it was too similar uh, between them um, yeah so that's like one example from the 2016 a question question number three Again, it's the same thing. It's those questions that you have these check marks, explain your reasoning. Again, it's at the 25 minute question. Okay. And then, you know, again, using symbols to solve for something. So again, not, not requiring a calculator and a lot of explain your reasoning kinds of kinds of questions. Now, there are other short answer questions that explain your reasoning, which is but they, they won't be the QQT questions because the QQT is worth 12 points and it's suggested time of 25 minutes. That doesn't mean those other questions that I'm not including here on this list aren't important or aren't useful to practice. Um, 
that's good for your studying, but for your timing yourself on the QQT questions, um, it's 2015 number three, 2016 number three, 2017 number three, 2018 number four, and 2019, last year's exam, it was number two. Okay, so it, it's not always the same numbered question. They, they can go in different order. But again, again, briefly explain your reasoning, briefly explain your reasoning without deriving or using equations. Again, use sentences to logically explain your reasoning on some of those, okay? Um, the paragraph argument questions was from 2015 number four and 2018 number five. The, like I said, the other three questions from the other three years were not relevant. They were on mechanical, one was on mechanical waves and tension. One was on um, a, a circuit and one, I, I think there were two of them that were kind of like circuits or power or, or that kind of thing. And so uh, the 2015 number four question, again, see it says seven points, suggested time 13 minutes. And the key part of the paragraph argument is they're always going to ask you at some point in a clear, coherent, paragraph length response. That's what you're looking for. That is the paragraph argument question. In a clear, coherent, paragraph length response, blah, 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 okay? That is what the paragraph argument question is. And so that's how I've identified in the 2018 one. Again, in a clear, coherent paragraph length response, etc. So look at those questions, study those questions specifically and use those as a to time yourself and to practice to see if you can handle those questions um, specifically because uh, that would be good preparation for the exam. Additionally, I found two other questions. This is from the exam guide from the like if I and I'll put a link in the description below to the AP Physics one exam guide. But when they this is how they describe the QQT question, but they give you an extra exa example question of a QQT as well as a paragraph argument. So that's one extra question, which every question that you can practice on is huge. Like it's really important. It's very useful. Um, to do to, to, to practice because that's 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 what I'm all about is like you practice more and more and once you've drilled yourself enough and you've practiced it you're, you'll you'll go into the test and you'll know how to approach problems how to break them down etc just practice practice makes perfect um, so they have a QQT question they, they explicitly list it as their QQT as they also have a um, paragraph argument question here where it says here again in the phrasing in a clear coherent paragraph length response that may also contain diagrams and or equations uh, indicate blah 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 okay so that's what you're looking for so those are the questions those are the things that we're going to be looking at for these qqt which is the first free response question you're going to take followed by the paragraph argument short answer question okay so those are my tips that's what to expect on the exam. That's what I think you should be looking at. That's what I think you should be preparing for and studying in great detail. Those questions and um, how to break them down. And like I said, you time yourself to get used to the format, the timing. See, um, you get 25 minutes just for that question. You don't get to split it between questions. If you finish the first question early, you don't get to spend the extra time on the next question. So um, th that's why I think the format of, of the studying is a little bit different because in past years, you, you just had all five questions and you could divide up the time however you saw fit, but not in this format. This format, you must spend the 25 minutes. What that also means is you should use the full 25 minutes to your advantage. Make sure you hit all the points. If you finish the question early, either of the questions, uh, spend time to review it, okay? Take your time, review it, double check it. There's no advantage to finishing it quickly, okay? Because you don't get that extra time on the next question and you don't get bonus points for finishing early. So make sure you use up that full allotment of time, okay? You guys have any other more questions about the AP Physics 1 exam? Uh, leave it in the comments below and I'll answer them as best I can. But good luck on your preparation.